morning, everybody. It's Brian Caprice from Major League Forex, and today we are hosting our first Monday morning market breakdown. And for those of you that enrolled today, uh, what we are doing is we are my job today is to really help you guys kind of set up what you should be looking for for the week as far as currencies go, uh, particularly with Forex binaries and Forex call spreads. So for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, you may or may not have seen some of the articles I've written for Nadex or been on some of my webinars. Uh, I'm an instructor over at Major League Trading, but I'm also the co-founder of Major League Forex, where I spend most of my time. And I've traded various things over the years. I uh, found binaries a few years ago and was able to adapt my kind of Forex structure to um, Nadex and some of the things that Nadex offers, particularly with the binaries and the spreads. Um, definitely a big news trader, so it matched my style. Uh, I traded traditional options, so for me, making the jump over into binaries uh, to add an additional stream of revenue was definitely something that fit very, very well. So uh, I've created a couple of different programs over at Major League Forex. Um, you guys may have heard the 30-minute trader program. It was something for people that didn't have a lot of time. Uh, and then more recently, I did a five-minute binary course. Obviously, those are currencies and um, definitely something I could adapt in for people, again, that were super, super busy and had full-time jobs. Um, uh, I worked for one of the big three banks, so definitely had some uh, financial advisory experience, learned kind of what happened on the inside. And then I've been in education for about eight years, eight, nine years now, uh, teaching people how to trade the markets. So definitely worked with a, a wide variety of people and backgrounds and time structures and and even financial situations. And um, it, it's definitely something that um, gave me kind of a new outlook on things. So one of the big things that I found throughout all of this with financial advising with uh, you know being a trader that started back in the you know early 2000s, and, you know dealing with two crashes, um, spending eight years dealing with uh, different students that were you know kind of learning how to trade, was that if you don't go into this whole thing with a plan, um, you tend to not do as well. So the goal of these sessions on Monday morning, it is early, and I appreciate you guys coming out, but it's to really kind of get a, a game plan for what you're going to look for and trade during the week. It's not going to be so much of what we're going to trade the next hour. It's going to be about where you set up and where you're looking to trade. So even if you are busy and you do have a full-time job, if you know there's a news release at a certain time, you can make time to come back to the charts and look for something like a binary or even a call spread, you know, if it's something that's overnight that, you know, and again, I'll mention those. Um, this is uh, the new family picture. Uh, this is the little one. Uh, the little one was actually up last night a bunch. Um, she just decided that sleep was no longer cool. So two or three times last night, it was kind of like, oh, is this morning? Oh, it's only 1.30. So um, love these guys. Uh, these two, the, the two boys are sleeping, but the little one is uh, finally knocked out. I was excited. But I just wanted to brag about the family a little bit. So, um, whoops, you guys can't see them. There you go. Um, that's the little one. Uh, there's my wife and my two twin boy sons. And actually, it's funny. The one on my, the bigger one here, if you guys can see my mouse, uh, he's actually the, the middle child. He's the younger of the two twins. And uh, Asher, he's the, uh, he's the oldest by four minutes. But uh, they, keep me, they keep me busy. And these two have already started to learn how to trade the markets. Um, everybody always says, God, I wish I'd started when I was young. Well, these two little ones are uh, already starting. Um, Unfortunately, they're a little bit more focused towards some other Fortnite-type games, but uh, they're already starting to learn to read charts, so yeah, it's been fun. So with that being said, let me start with the Nadex risk disclaimer. So trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here today is for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility, and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on an underlying asset, again today Forex, um, including Forex, stock index futures, commodity futures, and economic events. And again, we will talk about economic events. Trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their investment on any given transaction. However, the design of Nadex contracts ensures investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. And Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. Now, with that being said, I will say that one of the big th biggest things for me that I like about Nadex, particularly being a news trader, is this last section that, you know, although things can be volatile, I love volatile, but you can't lose more than what you put into the transaction. That's a very big piece um, that you guys, if you're not taking advantage of that, uh, you definitely should be looking at. And I'll mention a few times today where I'm using that. All right. So going into this week, uh, obviously, we're using 3-3 because we use Sunday as the start. These are the top three. Uh, if you guys are going to join us on a weekly basis, we will kind of go over. I'll give you kind of the no more than top five. But uh, these are the time frames that, you know, you've got to be, you know, available if you're going to start trading uh, some of the news releases. Uh, and these are all Eastern, you know, Eastern time. Um, first one, biggest top one, obviously, is going to be Friday, March 8th at 8.30 a.m. Uh, we have non-farm employment change uh, for the U.S. We have unemployment rate for the U.S. And CAD, uh, Canada has the uh, same exact situation. 
where they have employment change and employment rate. So that's going to be probably the number one mover of the week. So if you can be available at that time, that is going to be a big time to get some movement out of the markets. And the currency pairs you'd be able to trade on that one, obviously, um, on Nadex would be dollar Canadian. That would be the main one. But you could also trade dollar yen uh, and probably even euro dollar, depending on what the non-farm number looks like. So a lot of different options on that one. Um, obviously, with the Canadian pairs, it's going to just be dollar CAD if you want to take advantage of the CAD news. Now, with that being said, when we're talking about the Canadian dollar, on Wednesday, March 6th at 10 a.m., uh, Canada has their uh, Bank of Canada rate statement. Now, anytime you hear interest rates in currencies, there's typically going to be some movement. Um, those are, that's kind of the, the, the fireworks. Um, you guys are familiar with uh, any type of stock market trading or stocks in general. Whenever there's an earnings release, that tends to be what the major catalyst is for, you know, kind of movement in the stock market. But anytime you hear interest rates or rates or overnights, uh, that tends to be a big kind of catalyst for movement, um, especially in the environment we're in right now. People are talking about, are we raising? Um, are we lowering? Are we holding? Are we hawkish? Are we dovish? Um, all those things matter right now. So for Wednesday, this will be a nice one to play here. And again, the, the pair that you would play for uh, binaries would be dollar cat. And this can be used with a binary or a spread. I'll, I'll mention it when we get to the chart. Now, the other one is, uh, is a nighttime announcement, and this will be Tuesday, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. So regardless of where you are, if you're not a really big you know, morning person, you can take advantage of this one. And this is the Aussie GDP number, quarter over quarter. So we actually have two different contracts we can trade for this one. We have the Aussie yen and the Aussie dollar. Now, one of the things I like about this one is because the U.S. market is not open, there's not as many traders out there, the spreads tend to be a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, which definitely helps us become profitable faster. Uh, the other thing I like about it is we can use some of the smaller time frames that we don't traditionally use. Um, in particular, the two hour binaries, okay? Um, a lot of times, you know, whenever we're talking Nadex, we're talking about the dailies for Forex, those are 3 p.m.s. But the nice thing is we could take advantage of some of the, and I'll call them off time frames, they're not the most popular ones, but there is an 11 p.m. that, it, you know, expiry, as well as, you know, you can get some of the two-hour ones that are in there for um, the Aussie dollar. So it gives us a little bit more to kind of play with uh, that we don't traditionally have, okay? But that should be a big one. There should be, and I'll, and I'll go over what the movements typically will be, um, but that's that's a big that's a big one. Um, should be an easy target, all right? Uh, now, with that being said, uh, I'm using the daily, daily effects. If you guys are not using this for news releases, this is a great source. Uh, just head over to dailyeffects.com. I'll actually bring it up so you guys can actually see it. Um, here we go. Let me bring it across to this monitor. So on Daily Effects, uh, when you first load in, um, you're going to have a page that looks like this. It gives you market news and will give you kind of sentiment for the markets. Um, where I use it the most is over here. Uh, you go to Charts and Calendars, go down to Economic Calendar. Now, you do need to kind of tweak a little bit. Um, first thing you would do is click on Filters. Now, this is a question I get a lot. And again, this is I'm using this for Nadex as well. I do unclick Mexico, but I will leave China. Now, obviously China is not up on Nadex for something that we can trade, but whenever there's Chinese news, it will typically move the Australian pairs, okay? Because they are very, very linked with trade. So if there's Canadian news, I'm sorry, if there's Chinese news, look to the two Aussie pairs to be able to trade those, okay? Uh, also, I'll unclick new, and this will give us a, a wide variety of things. So um, I always go to weekly view also. It makes it a little bit easier for you to scroll down if you're not doing this. Um, and again, this is something I'll do every week. We'll just kind of go down and look at big hotspots. So um, obviously last night was very shy. Today is actually not that big of a day. Most of the news is already in. Uh, you guys can see we have medium with uh, U.S. news coming in. These aren't really huge movers, so it's nothing that we're going to see large explosions in the market. Um, obviously, you know, pound early in the morning uh, was a miss. Um, so there was a little bit of movement there. Tuesday is where we really start getting into some of the other ones, and that's where we marked off the Aussie rate change. Uh, and you'll see there's a bunch of European news. Uh, we also have ISN manufacturing and home sales. Now, home sales typically doesn't move the U.S. market as much, but obviously the manufacturing numbers will. Um, so this will be something I would be looking, you know, particularly, again, U.S., I tend to trade a lot of the two-hour binaries, particularly for news releases in the morning, uh, but kind of mark off uh, that as a potential one for you uh, to trade if you can. Uh, monthly budget doesn't necessarily move uh, anything. Uh, on Wednesday, we mark this one off as well, but we have. Um, GDP, um, obviously that one is early in the morning. Um, U.S. news is really nothing crazy, but we marked off the CAD, okay? Uh, you also have crude oil inventories, which can move the market a bit uh, if you're going to go over and trade the commodities. Um, that's definitely been a good trade for us lately, but 
again, for the just purely Forex, you'd be looking at the Canadian uh, rate decision over here, okay? Uh, on Thursday, again, Thursday has a bunch of ECB news. These are all going to be uh, somewhat earlier. Uh, and these are a little bit hard because uh, typically most of this, you guys will see this, this high section here. A lot of this, you know, it talks about Draghi speaking in Frankfurt after the policy, policy decision. So normally talks are a little bit harder to plan. So you're going to focus on definitely your upper levels. Uh, but any of the rate decisions and margin, again, these will all be high. It's expected to be zero. It was zero. You know, we're not expecting too much there. But um, again, be careful of any positions that you are in um, for this. Um, initial jobless claims, uh, that can also be one that moves the market slightly. It's marked as a medium, uh, but you'll definitely get some movement in, say, the most likely the euro pound. I'm sorry, uh, the euro yen. Uh, I'm sorry, dollar yen. Coffee is not fully kicked in. Um, Typically, you'll see a little bit of movement over here, maybe 30, 40 pips. So that's definitely something we can grab uh, for binaries. Uh, and then going into Friday, Friday is obviously the big move of the day. You can see that these are clustered around this 8.30 time frame right here. Um, the CAD numbers, the non-farm numbers, the unemployment rate, um, that's going to be a big one, okay? Um, and that kind of you know basically closes us out for the day. Um, obviously, no trading on Saturday. So again, this you know news comes in, but we're kind of capped right here. Um, all right, so with that being said, um, let me actually jump into some charts here so you guys can kind of see um, where we are. Let's see, restore our windows. Oops, hold on. Um, what these are kind of looking like. All right, so just so you guys know, uh, if you guys are familiar with trading currencies over on Nadex, uh, we have access to a fair amount of pairs. It's not all the currency pairs that exist, but these are the most liquid, these are the most stable. Uh, and they're all very, very good pairs to trade. So uh, as far as major levels that you will look out for and just some kind of notes on each individual pair, the Aussie Yen is one we mentioned a few times. Um, you're you're going to have some areas this week that definitely I would keep an eye on. Uh, if you look up here, and let me blow this chart up on a kind of a daily level. For daily chart, this one has about 75 pip ATR. If you're not familiar with what an ATR is, it's basically what the average movement is during that day. It's called the average true range, okay? As you can see with this blue box, we've been kind of more or less consolidating into what we would call kind of an area of sellers right above, which is what this red kind of uh, area is, all right? Um, kind of a little sneaky area, but you've seen price keeps bouncing off of it. It's been up there one, two, three, and we've kind of made a fourth attempt. And at least over at Major League Forex, when things are getting hit three, four times, it's starting to lose its power. So for me, I'm kind of looking at two things here. I'm looking at potentially finding a short, again, where are Candle's red right now, and you'll see in the lower time frames, it has bounced. Uh, but more importantly, I'm looking for when this finally breaks to the top side, it, it could be a, ni a nice little potential trade. And you guys will see, we kind of have the the higher high, the higher lows forming. Okay, for those of you that are pattern traders, um, you guys can see that we kind of have this section kind of forming up, right? Solid top, kind of trend line up, okay? Looking for kind of an explosion out the top. Now, this is an interesting one too because um, if you go over to the, um, I wouldn't quite say, this one is, is for me is not spread ready yet, but if you look at some of the binaries, there are some, uh, there's a weekly binary on this one that I was kind of keeping an eye on and I'm watching and, and I'm waiting for price to kind of enter this area between 79.62 and really, really 80.13. Um, there's some binaries that are at this point rather cheap. So I'm waiting for the signal, but if you're looking at, um, like a weekly, let's see, up in the like one, really, I mean, the 80.75, I mean, you're talking about, you know, we're about what, 100 and about 150 pips from there. If we start to enter this area right now, the risk on that one is pretty attractive for me for something on a longer term. Um, you know, if you're taking some small risk, you could, you know, look to take some of these out. Um, not a bad trade, although we're not there yet. So if you have your charts up, I would definitely mark this off or watch the recording later. Look for a breakout and then a little bit of a retrace back into this red area. And like I said, this red area is from 70, 79.60 up to really, up, really up to 80. Um, again, look for a kind of a, a push through. And, and the reason why I like it is because we can really get back up into this 80 zone. Okay, we saw a little bit of slowing here, but you guys see this little this little pullback area? Uh, I'll mark off right here. You guys see this kind of area up here uh, from 81.77 to 82.22. This is most likely where this price is going to kind of run up to if it's able to break this zone. So for me, that's what I'm looking for. And again, you can play this with news. Now, one thing I'm going to kind of touch on before we move on is the ATR of 75 pips. 
So any of the larger news releases, I'm not going to use the daily. I'm going to use the four hour over here. Okay, the four hours is the bottom left hand corner for me. Uh, this four hour zone, you can see we've kind of hit, you know, we've touched here, we've touched here, we've touched here, we've touched here again. So this is the area I'm looking to kind of break out of. Um, best way to do it over here on any of the news rates is look for big kind of turning points. Okay. Um, obviously, there's the turning point right here. Okay, um, let's see, I'll mark this off. Obviously, this is an area that price stopped and turned and went higher, okay? Um, obviously, there's another one right over here, same situation. We also have this line. So depending on where price is, when news is kicking in, that's where your potential swings will be. And the swing on this one for any of the news is probably between, I'd say 45 and 65 pips, top to bottom. So uh, wherever it is, Look top and bottom 65 pips and see if you can find an area of turnaround. And that's potentially where your target's going to be. And then obviously you can match, you know, accordingly. Um, it's a little bit early to be looking for those zones right now because we don't have any news today in the Aussie. Uh, next pair would be Aussie dollar. Now, Aussie dollar kind of has a similar pattern. Uh, on the daily, you can see, again, this time we have a solid base on the bottom. And again, more or less consolidation on the top. Even on the four hour, you can see that things are starting to get very kind of squishy here, right? Now we've touched one, two, three, four. We're at the fifth touch over here, and we're seeing on the lower time frame, you know, where, where price started this gap up, it's really starting to grind back down again, and it's actually filled the gap from from the um, from the weekend. But another push down again, we'd be looking to go short on this one. Now, this one is a little bit different. Uh, this one does have um, where is it? This one I also like a, a similar binary uh, again for a weekly basis. Um, I'm not going to be doing any overnights on this one just because Monday is very, very shy on news. Um, but this one also has kind of similar drops. And the reason I like this one more to the downside is, again, we have all this basing. And if we can break this base, what do we have to the downside? Okay, I, I have this area marked here. But what's down here? Right? There's not a lot down here. So for me, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a break of this kind of stabilization, this buying area down here. Uh, we had this really, really crazy day. You'll see it on most of the charts, right? Price went all the way down. Now the eighth here on this on the Aussie dollar is less. It's 64. So just keep keep that in mind when you were looking at um, contracts. But for me, this is something that I'm definitely looking for a break below. Looking at weekly contracts, I know a lot of people don't trade those, but I definitely look for binaries to the downside on this one. Again, we may get a little bit of a pop up, but right now it's got some junk. It's got to clear through before I'm willing to take this one um, long. But again, we uh, I'm getting signals for downtrend setups based off of what the candles look like. And um, once we, you know, once we break this gap on this 30 minute candle, uh, I'm looking to take positions here. And, and there is some nice, you know, contracts to the side. Again, if you guys are not looking at weekly binaries, please go look at them. Um, there are some nice ones to the downside right now with the indicative value being at 79.31 right now. Uh, it's where price is on, on the, on the, um, on the charts. Um, you know, we're talking about 100, 120 pips, uh, basically two days worth of movement to the downside. There's some really attractive. Uh, binary contracts and, and again if you haven't tested those uh, do them in, in in demo mode first just to make sure you're comfortable with the longer durations um, but Monday mornings that's kind of what I'm looking for and then I trade shorter durations for the news releases um, dropping down to kind of some of the euro pairs uh, euro pound is probably one of my favorite pairs um, for analysis I don't do as many trades on it uh, in full disclosure but I do use it for a lot of analysis um, one of the big things we're looking for is areas of turning points right so an example for me on the daily was when this zone was broken, I was looking to go short when we had the retrace. And we did. We had the retrace. It came back up and grabbed that prior level. Again, you guys have heard the, you know, areas of buyers become areas of sellers and vice versa. Sellers become buyers or, you know, old support becomes new resistance. Very similar to that. Uh, that's what I was looking for in this trade uh, to take this back to the downside. And, and, and we got the gap. But what I'm using this pair for, particularly you know, around news releases, again, when Draghi speaks, this is a pair that I'm going to go to later in the week. Uh, and there was other, obviously, European news. But go to this pair and, and see what's trending. Um, very, very important pair to look at because here's the thing. If you're going to trade the euro dollar or the pound dollar, right, you're basically, you know, if you're going to if you're going to use either of those pairs to go long, you are basically trading them against dollar weakness. Well, Here's the thing, if you have a, if you can match those two pairs together and say we have something like that, you know, look at the, the current trend in this one, right? I mean, even now we're starting to drive back down again. If this is showing us pound strength and we're playing a dollar weakness move, basically meaning that we're either playing pound, you know, we're either paying pound strength or, do, you know, euro strength. Why would you not go to the pound, the one that's stronger, those two, right? Don't take an intermediate pair when you can go for an extra strong pair. So 
that's how I'm using this one. There are binary contracts on this one, and I will trade this one. Um, typically, anytime there's any talk about Brexit, this is a great pair to, to trade. Why? Because obviously with the, you know, the pound leaving the European Union, there's a, there's a lot of movement in this pair. You can get some big swings. You guys can see top to bottom. Um, even on, a, you know, last week even, um, this is where the candle is here. We had a, talking about 174 pip move. So there's definitely some nice movement in this pair. Um, even in the binaries. And just one thing to note on this one as well, um, this one uh, cannot be traded with five minute binaries just because I, I did get that question the other day um, if I'm using this for five minutes. You cannot trade this one five minute binary wise. We are a little bit limited. It's not there yet. It may be there eventually. Uh, so this one I typically do, if I'm going to trade it, I, I typically will use longer durations. Um, one thing I'm looking for in this one as well is Particularly, and this is something I'll look at today. I'm going to see how it unfolds in the next probably half hour uh, once the U.S. market comes online. But before the European market closes, is this was a pretty nice drop for me for today. Um, this motion, uh, let's see, right in here. So where we are right now, we're at about that level. And particularly in something like, um, let's see, one of the call spreads. Um, Right now, we're a little bit out of range. And for me, I, you know, everybody has their own opinions on where they're putting their call spreads. I typically like to put them near the ceiling or the floor, and, and I look for that. And right now, this one's off a little bit on – it's, it's, it's moved a little bit too much for my trading today. So because it doesn't match up, that's when I flip over and I would go to a binary contract. Um, taking something like this short right now on a binary, uh, let's see what we got here. Number of different options. Uh, if you guys, again, look at the shorter durations, there's an eight to 10. If there was news, I'd be looking at an eight to 10 right now, um, waiting nine minutes to put it on, but there is not one of those today. Uh, but there is, you know, this is a this is a full day. There's a 3 a.m., a 7 a.m., an 11, a 3 p.m., a 7 p.m., and an 11 p.m. So, and there's a weekly. So there's a lot of different options for a contract like this. And again, it'll obviously add a little bit of premium. But, you know, at this time, probably, you know, I'd be looking at, uh, probably a 3 p.m. or a 7 p.m. Uh, just to see kind of um, that's the appropriate duration just to see what kind of the risk is to the downside. And again, it's not too bad. Um, you know, there's something in here like for me, there's let's see. Just looking at some analysis on this one, if you do like this one short and again, I, I am kind of biased this one to the short side right now. Um, you have something like a, a 8560 strike price. Uh, you're talking about only needing about what about a 30 pit move. Um, yeah, actually about a 25 pip move on something like this with about $20 max risk. Um, again, at expiration, if it would close below that, you'd have about an 80 pip profit on that one. So it's about a four to one risk to reward trace you to, to the downside. And it only needs to move back to the start of this initial move, you know, from Sunday night. So things like this is what I'm looking for on a daily basis, um, you know, particularly in the short term. And again, that's just a, a small trade. Uh, as far as looking on a two hour on this one, obviously it's not priced yet. We need about another six minutes. Um, that could be another option if you like this one. Again, most of the movement in this pair will, will occur in the next two hours uh, and, and finish up before the European close. But the strikes are, are obviously smaller. Instead of being 20 pips, they are only 10 pips wide. We just have a lot less time. Um, so again, be interesting to see what this one, uh, there is a, let's see, there's an 85, there's an 85.77 and an 85.67. That could potentially be nice targets. And even the 8557 isn't too bad. You're only talking about, you know, 30 pips to the downside. And I do mention ATRs, as you guys can see. Uh, here's ATRs for the different pairs. If I bring this up to a 60 minute, um, you guys can see that it's about an 11 pip ATR. Okay, so it's saying it has about the potential to move 20. Uh, again, that's an average. You can see it is a little bit slower farther back. Um, so again, could be a nice little trade set up here if you guys are looking at this in a bit. Uh, just to cycle through the pairs, let's go back down. And the next pair in the grouping would be Euro, Euro Yen. Uh, Euro Yen for me, it finally broke through this kind of top side. I've been waiting for it to kind of see what it did here. It was basing, it pushed through finally higher. You can see though, since it's since it hit kind of this yellow zone here on the four hour, uh, that was a dial down zone from here. You guys see it back here, this kind of pullback, this impulse correction pullback. Um, you can see it's kind of hit and turned to the downside. Now, I missed this trade. This would have been one to grab uh, late last night. Um, now, this is definitely one that you could have taken in a weekly. Um, let's see. And actually, this one actually wasn't a bad call spread from last night. Uh, had you been looking at this one, and again, I didn't, but if you guys are not analyzing your charts on Sunday nights, looking after the strikes print for your weekly setups, um, this definitely would have been a great one. Um, 
had you taken a, a daily on this one though, you'd be uh, looking, sitting kind of pretty right now. Uh, there was, let's see, it was at, the ceiling is, uh, there was a 124.70 to 127.20. Uh, and that's basically where price was last night when it opened uh, up in this area. Uh, that one is that one's pretty nice right now. You're about eh, about 40 pips into that movement um, with about seven hours to go. OK, I would be cautious about the little bounce here. But again, nice little spread you could have taken for this one uh, based off of a four hour level. And if you guys know in currencies, four hour levels are pretty rock solid. So those are things that you're looking for. Uh, but as far as anything else that I love on this one, I, it's not one of my favorite pairs right now. So, again, besides this small setup from last night. Um, I wouldn't be looking at too much. Looking at the euro dollar, uh, euro dollar for me is kind of wedged uh, between this kind of upper area. Uh, excuse a lot of colors, there's a lot of strategies going on this one. I use this to teach a lot. Uh, you'll notice this area down here, this 112.40, basically 112.40 area, and then this upper area, the 114.70. We're kind of stuck in the middle, and although you can see on this daily, very, very large candle, you know, crashing down, um, on the, it, it's just because we're kind of zoomed in right now. Um, it's more like this, okay? Take some of the explosiveness out of it. You can see it's just been a kind of lazy roll up, roll down, uh, but at least we've gotten some nice kind of movement uh, overnight. We had a gap and drop lower. Um, I'm gonna wait for news on this one. I'm gonna wait till we get some nice trend direction. Uh, a lot of basing, at least on the four hour, not a lot of explosion, okay? I, I like I like pairs with a lot of momentum, a lot of movement, and we're just not necessarily seeing that on this one right now. Um, so I'm gonna wait for something, you know, again, Look on the lower time frame, see if we have something set up later today. But as far as a weekly standpoint, I don't really love too much on this one, so I'm not really focusing on it. Um, dropping down to pound yen, okay, would be the next pair on the list. So pound yen is also in that upper range on the daily. Excuse me. Uh, this one I am definitely more short biased. Uh, it's kind of turned, it's kind of stabilized itself, although it's made two, three attempts down into this area of buyers. And even looking on lower time frame, you can see, you know, this is kind of a flat area here. Uh, boom, one attempt down, it gapped up, and then boom, drove deeper. So uh, we, I'm in a downtrend setup, so I'm waiting for this to kind of start showing me the signal that it wants to go lower, and I'm looking for a short here. Now, this is a pair we can definitely get some movement. It has a 130 pip ATR, so it's definitely one of the larger movers. Um, one thing for me on this one, I tend not to take a lot of call spreads on this one, just because the premium tends to be higher because it has a larger ATR. But I'll tell you right now, this one has some great binaries on it. Um, and again, it has a lot of options for binaries, okay? This one is a 3 a.m., 7, 11, uh, and even has weeklies on there, okay? Uh, the weeklies, uh, again, you guys can see this was basically straight up last week. It was a lovely, lovely, lovely weekly trade last week. We had a very nice impulse. We had a little bit of a pullback to get in. And when it broke forward, you guys can see last week, um, let's see, 377 pip. Okay, so very, very large movement, especially on a weekly basis. And now, again, being in this upper area, uh, looking at kind of the same situation where there's, uh, you know, some nice weeklies to the downside in this one. Um, and the weeklies are requiring about 200 pips uh, to make them, you know, really nice risk to reward ratio for myself. Um, again, over in the kind of 146.25 to 145.75 strikes, again, you know, if you like them, choose one based off your risk to reward and what your risk tolerance is. Uh, for me, risk, you know, risking about 20-ish was not bad for those. So I'm actually looking to find, uh, and again, waiting for the confirmation to go to the downside to travel back down to this 144.27. Uh, and again, you guys can see, I mean, it did 377. This one needs 200. Uh, it's basically less than a two pip ATR to the downside um, in, in binary land for that one. Um, also, for those of you that, oops, where is it? hit the wrong hit the wrong button there um all right next pair uh pound so pound dollar is a similar situation to the pound yen one of the different one of the added things i'm going to put into this one is not only are the, are the weeklies not bad on this one i do like the spreads on this pair a little bit more than the pound yen but you also have touch brackets okay uh there are four touch brackets in case you guys didn't know the pound is one of them okay um I don't think any of the touch brackets have been triggered on this one yet. No, it doesn't appear so. Uh, but this is definitely one. If you guys aren't looking at touch brackets, look at this one for touch brackets. Um, it's one that our students are really, really getting into. But similar situation, we are at a daily top looking for things to go to the downside. You've already seen a bit of movement. Um, again, when we had this kind of basing, this gap to the top side, um, we've pulled back to where we were Friday. Okay, And again, big, strong movement to the downside. Again, that was news-based. 
price is pulling back, if we can get a continuation. Looking at the four hour, you can see we don't really get a lot of basing until this 130, 67 area, um, and actually a little bit lower. So some nice setups to the downside. Those are big areas I'm looking for. If price stabilizes, again, this is a pair that is very good to trade for news. Um, it's four hour ATR is 37, it's daily is 105. So you get an average of about 60, anywhere from 60 to 70 on a, on a miss on major news. And this has some news. Now, one thing to be cautious with of this one, anytime anybody mentions Brexit, this thing can fly. So just be cautious. I'll look for levels of 130.40 and down here to 128.43, although that's quite a stretch at this point. Um, you're talking about, you know, 400 pips to the downside. That, that may be a little high. So uh, definitely I would be focusing more on the four hour here. But again, this is one of the touch brackets pairs. Get in there and practice those touch brackets on demo. Um, touch bracket to the downside is actually pretty nice at this point. Um, I'll let you guys go check that one out. Um, again, they are a little bit different than the spreads. Just be aware of that. Okay. Um, dropping down to the next one, we have, um, let's see, DollarCAD. DollarCAD is one of the big mo news movers for this week. You can see there was definitely some big explosive movement um, from Friday. Huge, huge candle, large movement. Again, that was news based. It was 181 pips in one day. It has an ATR of 80. Now, we are approaching an area where we've had sellers in the past. So even though everything has been green up, I am actually looking to short. I'm looking for confirmation, have not received it yet, okay? I am waiting to go short here, and this one is also a, actually this one is not a touch bracket pair. I thought this one was, but it was not. Um, I'd be looking at weeklies on this one as well as dailies. Uh, we talked about Friday is going to be a very, very large day for this one, so definitely be locked in that. Uh, also, Wednesday morning will be a big one for this pair. So keep those two things in mind. Uh, big areas I'm watching for on this one is, see this little pullback right here? Um, it's about, talking about 80 pips from where we are right now. That's going to be a little bit of a kind of a bump area, but I'm really looking for back down here, bringing price all the way back down. This is this this is a parabolic move, double ATR. I'm waiting for a flip and kind of price to come back down. Weeklies on this one are very, very nice. Uh, if you're, again, you're not trading weeklies, uh, uh, you know, try them and demo with a small position, but I also like some of these dailies based off of news. Um, Dollar Swiss, this one had a very, very quick snap down on Friday. We had kind of an area set up. Um, it, it literally went down again. We had this impulse, this correction area back, push forward. It literally snapped down, hit the profit target, and this come back up again. Um, this one is in an area of basing. It's it's really been sucked around this kind of this parity level for a while. Um, this is a, a pair that's really sensitive to geopolitical things. Uh, you know, we probably had this pop just because of um, the news. I guess there was more news yesterday about. Um, Trump and China coming to kind of an agreement. Uh, anything North Korea based will kind of balance this around. Um, no real setups for me on this one. Uh, again, like I said, this is a more of a ge geopolitical type trade with retraces. Um, nothing that I that I love right now. And then lastly, uh, Euro Yen, we are up in an area, uh, kind of like some of the other Yen pairs. We are up in this kind of, again, an area of sellers. We've, we've you know rallied for four days straight. Um, we're up there on the lower time frames. We're starting to see a flip. Uh, for me, I am looking for pullbacks back down into really this level, back into the 110.75. A lot of this will be based off today's U.S. market as well. Um, this one, I will use some two hours in there. Uh, be cautious. At noon, this one gets rather slow. Uh, there's no U.S. news today, so there probably won't be any huge catalyst driving this one. Um, but again, I am definitely looking for the, somewhat of a retrace. If I do break this level of 112.08 up to 112.64, um, I will look to take it all the way up to 113.60. So um, this one, I'm probably not willing to take a weekly on this one, uh, but definitely looking at some of the longer term overnight positions. Um, I wouldn't necessarily hesitate to take uh, any of the early morning ones. Uh, we just passed the, the 7 a.m.s, but you could take this as an overnight position today, um, trying to get a full 24 hour binary out of this one to the downside. OK, now, with that being said, guys, um, again, Mondays uh, typically are a great day to set up trades. Um, you know, there can be amazing setups, but as of today, um, nothing that I'd necessarily take right at this moment. I do like some of the weeklies, though. Uh, the weeklies are really kind of set up nicely this week. Um, a lot of turning a lot of turning areas on the larger time frames. Again, look at those dailies. Look for the major areas of buyers and sellers. And then again, dive into your weekly binaries for those. Uh, and again, there is a pound touch bracket. If you guys aren't familiar with them, go over those touch brackets right now. So with that being said, I'm a little bit over eight. Um, I will probably cut a little bit out next week to keep you guys out of here to get you out early. If you have more questions for us, uh, please don't hesitate to go over to our website at majorleagueforex.com. 
this is an image of it. If you guys have Discord, if you're not using it, it's a chat program. We actually have daily set up um, meetings over there as well. You guys can always click Discord and get that information. You can email me at support at majorleagueforex.com, or if you are on Discord, here's my tag, MLFX Brian, number 1495. All right. With that being said, guys, good trading today. I will touch base with you next week. I'm going to make a little bit of a you know a couple adjustments. And uh, any recommendations you want, please go ahead and send them in, and we will add them to next week's broadcast. So I thank everybody for coming out today, and uh, that concludes our morning broadcast. Thank you, guys.